Greetings tech and gaming fans, Edge Runners is back with the latest updates you don't want to miss. In today's episode, Nvidia has announced embargo lift dates, Microsoft upgrades DirectX with AI rendering, and Asus BIOS update for Ryzen processors. In addition, we take a look at new action RPG by Rebel Wolves and more. Prepare a cup of your favorite tea, settle in, and let's kick things off. First up, AMD and its partners continue to optimize and improve the performance of the latest Ryzen processors. Recently, Taiwanese company ASUS announced the release of a new update for the X870 and X670 motherboards. ASUS became the first hardware manufacturer to introduce BIOS version Ajisa 1.2.0.3, although it's currently in beta. The company published a full list of models compatible with the new firmware, mostly featuring flagship models such as Crosshair, ROG Strix, and ProArt. This patch is expected to improve performance and efficiency, though specific figures have not been disclosed. Additionally, it is likely that the update adds support for the AMD Ryzen 9900X3D and Ryzen 99950X3D chips unveiled at CES 2025. Typically, Asus enthusiasts release their tests quickly after such updates, so detailed performance reports should be available in the coming days. Are you planning to test the new Ajisa update? Let us know in the comments. Microsoft has announced plans to enhance DirectX to align the API's capabilities with modern advancements in graphics rendering. A key upcoming feature is neural rendering. In a blog post, Microsoft explained the concept. Neural rendering refers to a set of AI-powered technologies designed to improve the quality of textures, lighting, and reflections. It also aims to reduce the computational load on GPUs. In collaboration with hardware manufacturers, Microsoft intends to develop an open-source, standardized framework that game developers can easily integrate into their projects via the DirectX API. One of the technologies within neural rendering is cooperative vectors. By multiplying matrices with vectors of arbitrary sizes, it optimizes matrix vector operations used in AI training. This in simpler terms speeds up the performance of frame generators, upscalers, and other AI-based technologies. Microsoft highlighted that cooperative vectors leverage the tensor cores of RTX 50 GPUs, a clear nod to Nvidia's latest cards, though tensor cores have been present since the RTX 20 series. There is no timeline yet for the deployment of neural rendering in DirectX. Nvidia has announced the embargo lift dates for reviews of its GeForce RTX 50 series graphics cards. Reviews for the flagship GeForce RTX 5090 Founders Edition and partner models will be published on January 24th. On the same day, reviews for the GeForce RTX 5090D, a version designed for the Chinese market, will also be available. However, reviews for the GeForce RTX 5080 will arrive five days later, on January 29th, when critics can share their tests of both the Founders Edition and add-in board versions. All three models, GeForce RTX 5090, 5090D, and RTX 5080 will officially go on sale simultaneously on January 30th. Notably, the GeForce RTX 5090 Founders Edition marks Nvidia's return to offering a flagship graphics card suitable for small form factor systems. The card will occupy just two expansion slots in a PC case, making it a compact yet powerful option for high performance builds. Are you planning to upgrade to the RTX 50 series this year? Let us know in the comments. Rebel Wolves, a studio formed by former CD Projekt Red employees, has officially revealed their action RPG, The Blood of Dawnwalker. The game is dark in tone, with vampires as its central theme. The developers have released a cinematic trailer showcasing the story's premise. Set in an alternate medieval Europe, the game follows Cohen, a young man who gains powerful abilities and aims to save his loved ones from vampires. Cohen will face choices between retaining his humanity or succumbing to dark powers. The game introduces a mechanic called hunger, where the protagonist must feed on blood to survive, players will have the freedom to explore locations and the decisions made during the game will have consequences. The Blood of Dawnwalker is built on Unreal Engine 5. Rebel Wolves plans to release the game on PC, PS5 and Xbox Series. However, a release date has not yet been announced and gameplay footage is expected to be shared later in 2025. According to the project's website, The Blood of Dawnwalker is described as the first chapter of an entirely new RPG saga, suggesting the developers have plans for multiple games in the series. What do you think of Rebel Wolves' new RPG concept? Share your thoughts in the comments. 
The authors of the video cards portal report that specifications for the upcoming Radeon RX 9070 XT graphics card have appeared on the website of the British retailer Overclockers UK. According to the listed details, the flagship GPU from AMD's RDNA 4 generation will feature 4096 stream processors, a base clock speed of 2.4 GHz, a boost clock of up to 2.97 GHz, a 260 watts TDP, and 16 GB of GDDR6 video memory with a 256-bit bus. The site also notes that RDNA 4 graphics cards will utilize the PCI 4.0 interface with the Radeon RX 9070 XT positioned as a solution for 4K resolution. It is worth mentioning that the retailer also provided specifications for the Radeon RX 9070, but most of its features are similar to those of the Radeon RX 9070 XT. Video cards journalists speculate that the retailer may not have accurate information about the sub-flagship specifications. At CS 2025, Nvidia announced the recommended retail prices for its new GeForce RTX 50 series graphics cards. Unfortunately, these prices appear far from realistic. For example, in Finland, the RRP for the GeForce RTX 5080 Founders Edition was set at 1,229 euros, but its availability and release date remain unclear. Meanwhile, retailer ProShop has listed eight non-reference models from Taiwanese vendor Gigabyte, and the pricing is unlikely to please consumers. The only option for those looking to avoid paying a premium is the base WinForce 3 OC model. All other GPUs are at least 15% more expensive, ranging from €1,419 to €1,669. The most expensive is the top-tier GeForce RTX 5080 Aorus Extreme Water Force, which carries a 35% markup. Other major vendors like Asus and MSI have yet to provide pricing information. However, it is likely they will follow a similar pattern offering entry-level models like Prime and Ventus at RRP, while charging significantly more for high-end versions. A few years ago, such markups would have been unheard of, but today Nvidia's partners often disregard the recommended retail prices, contributing to soaring costs for advanced GPUs. How do you feel about the rising cost of GPUs? Share your thoughts in the comments. Studio The Farm 51 has released a new gameplay trailer for Chernobylite 2 Exclusion Zone, an open-world post-apocalyptic RPG reminiscent of Stalker. The game is set in a similar Exclusion Zone environment. The developers have also launched a Kickstarter campaign to raise funds. The money will be used to add a full-fledged first-person mode to the game. According to the developers, Chernobylite 2 was initially designed as a third-person game. While a first-person view is available during exploration, combat is restricted to third-person, which has received criticism from players. Backers of the the Kickstarter campaign will get early access to the action game through a closed beta or early access phase before its release on Steam. Chernobylite 2 Exclusion Zone is scheduled for release in 2025. Journalists from WCCF Tech, citing GeForce evangelist Jacob Freeman, report that the RTX 40 and 50 series graphics cards will support an enhanced version of DLSS frame generation technology. This update is based on a completely new AI model, allowing the improved DLSS frame generation to deliver higher performance, reduced input latency, and significantly lower video memory usage. In an example shared by an NVIDIA representative, the enhanced version provided 10% higher frame rates while using 400 megabytes less VRAM compared to the current iteration of DLSS. This improvement is particularly beneficial for owners of graphics cards with 8GB of video memory, such as the GeForce RTX 4060 and RTX 4060 Ti, as it offers the potential for notable performance gains in certain usage scenarios. Thanks for watching our latest gaming and tech roundup. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications on our latest updates. How do you feel about AI improving gaming performance? Share your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.